But you've all heard the big news by now. Space Force One crash lands smack in the middle of Dogtown. And with NUSA President Rosalind Myers still on board. Let me your ears, Night City. This is Maximum Mike, and I'm telling you this story is a big one. I'm guessing not many of you have ever stepped foot into Dogtown. <laughs> and no wonder. This hostile part of Pacifica belongs to one Kurt Hansen, an ex military soldier turned self appointed dictator. And this is the dictator's got a beef with the NUS president. Washington claims, of course, that Myers wasn't among the passengers of the ill fated flight. <laughs> yeah, right. Folks, this wasn't some freak accident, a stroke of supremely bad luck. No. Myers was most definitely on board, and it was Kurt Hansen who gave the order to blast her out of the sky. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I buy that. But why make such a desperate move, and why now? So let me give it to you straight. There are a lot of politicos in the upper echelons of the NUS government, and even more old friends from Myers Militech days. And I'll dream of another unification war, of putting an end to Arasaka's expansion on American soil. Once and for all. I mean, can you fathom any better justification for a call to arms? The assassination of the NUS president? And in the infamous free city of Night City, no less. <laughs> I'd call that preem. As for Militech covering their asses, that's why they kept Hansen on their shadow payroll. When the sabers start rattling and the blame starts flying, it's going to land squarely on him. A deserter of their own corp. Think on it. Sleep on it. But don't you dare wait on it. Another war may be just around the corner. You want to stay ahead of it. Some chumbatas of mine from Europe just recently educated me on a crime syndicate based in Paris, known widely as Le Collectif, or The Collective. It's not their official name, per se. But so little is known about this association that the line between fact and fiction is difficult to draw. That said, the collective makes one thing certain, that the European democratic system is just pretty window dressing, nothing more. The real strings of the collective are being pulled by French monarchists, the legitimists, Orleanists, Bonapartists, all of them with links to local terror cells. The attacks on the Bastille, the Arte Triumph, the Waterloo bombing, these were statements made by real power and its shrewd consolidation. And legit French government, don't they have any clout? Whatever non-monarchists do remain there, they know when to look the other way and where to look when they do. So you're thinking, okay, Max Mike, where are you going with all this? What's it got to do with Kurt Hansen? <laughs> well, here's my theory. Skylight. That name ring a bell? Yeah, that's right, the notorious Netrunner. Rumor is, well, first off, it's not just a single person, but a duo. And second, that whoever they are, they got on the collective's bad side. Now for the twist. These runners, Skylight, they started working for Hansen instead. And my sources say he had ambitious plans to expand his operation in Europe, right under the collective's nose. Kurt Hansen? self-appointed tyrant of Dogtown has been killed. Surprised? Yeah, I didn't think so. A warlord of Hansen's caliber is unlikely to be short on enemies. Now, if you're a regular listener, the first thought that popped to your head was the obvious. Probably Militech. Just them tying up a loose end. No people, this regicide was no fluke. Hansen believed his walls made him invincible. And he was wrong. And for his hubris, he paid the ultimate price. Think about it. What better way to send a message to the world than by taking down one of Night City's most powerful people in his own backyard? So, people, let me know what you all think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs>